Section 8.2, PyTag Attributes, Interfaces. Well, this begins the, a very long topic. Uh, we need to discuss the attributes that go into configuring a PyTag such that the interface will be able to collect data properly from the data source. And as you might guess, the, uh, the, the values that you're going to put into the fields that you see listed right here and the values for instrument tag and extended descriptor and point source and especially things like location codes those things are so tremendously closely tied to the configuration of that data source that really about the only fair thing to say at this point in the class is let's open up the interface manual because you know, I mean, it's kind of a lame excuse. We we really can't teach exactly how it works because everybody has different interfaces. We have hundreds of interfaces that we support, hundreds of different documents. Although they generally work the same, you will notice there are things uh, among the location codes that are going to be different from one interface to the other. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many different ways these DCS vendors and PLC vendors and SCADA system vendors, paper machine vendors, IT resource vendors, you wouldn't believe how many different ways they can represent data within a system. So we have we have a variety of ways of getting at that using location codes and things like extended descriptor. So let's take a look. Uh, the best place to start is to go into the documentation that goes with the interface. Now thankfully we have since quite a while now we've been in the interfaces directory for that particular interface we've been placing the documentation. So you can open up that documentation and in that documentation, for example this one for the OPC interface, well all the documents are, are written just about the same way but you'll find all the different attributes described uh, so that you know what your options are. So let me show you how to read this. First of all, let's go straight to page 5. I wanted to show you, actually let's go here, yeah, first of all, there's a um, there's a section at the very beginning of each interface manual that kind of describes what features that interface has. So if you have any questions as to whether this supports doing outputs or not, uh, does it support using the questionable bit uh, in retrieving that and marking uh, values in Pi? You know, those kinds of answers, whether it can do outputs or not, etc., uh, those kinds of things can be found very quickly and easily in this uh, page right here, this supported features. And in fact, typically when a customer has a question about, well, can I do this or can I do that, the first place I go to is I, I look in here and say, okay, well, let's see, what is, what are the capabilities? And then I'd start digging a little deeper. Now, we're discussing attributes of Pi, so you'll find an attributes section in each of the manuals. Let me go straight to this section here. Now, this is the point configuration section of the OPC interface. And you will find, for example, that the answers you see here as to what to put for each of these attributes is going to be slightly different on the OPC interface compared to other interfaces. So given that some of these answers are going to be different from interface to interface, let's in our next video discuss some of the common uh, attributes and some of the uh, some of the things that you would find in common going across those attributes, some of the values you'd use typically. The instrument tag field is typically the name of the tag as it appears on the data source. So for example, if we take a look at a this is an a tag whose data is collected by the OPC interface and it's called OPC pump speed. If we take a look at the classic section, you'll see an attribute called instrument tag and that's simply the name of the tag you know as it appears on the instrument system so on my instrument system well I'd better know something about the instrument system if I'm going to configure these tags now this is the part in the class at which I just recommend uh, for those of you who are not yourself familiar with that instrument system you better get somebody involved who is familiar with it because there are several things you're going to need to know about that instrument system uh, things like the names of the tags that appear on there. Now the extended descriptor, that's a place for, well, I guess I like to describe it as kind of a dumping ground for all the things that really don't fit anywhere else. 
I don't think there's any better way to describe it. A place for detailed query instructions. Well, yes, that's true. But we need those detailed query instructions because, simply put, we don't have the ability to create every single field that uh, that we may need to support. There's a variety of things that are unique to each uh, each interface and of course we have not modified our point database to support all of those. So those parameters that tend to be unique to specific interfaces or things that are fairly common but not common enough to really dedicate a, a field or a, a, an attribute to it, that's the kind of thing we put in the extended descriptor. I know we're going on and on, on the, about this, but let me give you an example of the extended descriptor as uh, it appears on this uh, this particular interface, the OPC interface. Let me go and find the extended descriptor. Here it is. Here's the attribute called xdesk on the OPC interface. And um, here are the list of things that it can be used for. It can be used to indicate that this is an event-based triggering for data collection in which you specify event equals tag name and then tag name is some pi tag and basically that means that this tag will be scanned whenever this tag right here receives a new snapshot value. So that's a good example of the type of thing that it's not real common. We have many of our interfaces support it, so we don't have a separate field called, you know, event trigger tag. We simply kind of dump that information uh, into the extended descriptor. And if I remember correctly, I think this interface requires if you have multiple attributes in the extended descriptor, you delimit them with semicolons. Okay. Here's another thing that we see the extended descriptor used for. If there is some kind of an item ID, which is basically the instrument tag, and it's longer than 32 characters, then we dump that into the extended descriptor. So that uh, the extended descriptor is used when we can't fit the instrument tag name into that 32 character space for instrument tag. Now. I don't want to go into detail about some of these. Some of these I frankly have not have never worked with uh, or haven't worked with in a long time uh, for scaling uh, certain types of data uh, as required. We have a scale option or excuse me, a scaling option that is available within the extended descriptor. It's this D0. Now, again, that's another example of the types of bells and whistles that we support through extended descriptor. Okay. Another one in the case of the OPC is whether we specify, um, receive the timestamp for an output value. Um, you see, it's, it's actually possible to output a value to the data source and even output the timestamp of a value to a data source. So you know, that's an example of the type of uh, bells and whistles again. Uh, and let's see, that's it for the OPC interface. So I would suggest to you, for your particular interface, go to your interface documentation. You know, here's the ints, or the pi, or excuse me, the uh, HTML interface. Here's the OLEDB COM connector. Here's the OPC interface. So go to your particular documentation and take a look at what we specify for the extended descriptor. Because as I said, it can be different from interface to interface. The exception specifications are used for doing the exception test. Again, let me show you. If we go into archive here, we can specify the exception deviation, and that is specified in either engineering units or percent of span. And also we can specify the exception min and the max time. If you recall from our discussion of data compression, the exception test is done on the interface side, and so this gives us a, a way to set that dead band. Now the point source is simply how we recognize or how the it's a field that is used to identify that this tag is scanned by a specific interface, in this case O for OPC. So as I mentioned earlier, when the interface starts up, it looks for all the tags that have the interface or that have the point source that was passed in its slash PS switch. So if you recall when we um when we have a 
an interface. Uh, typically it has a slash ps equals something switch. So for example, the slash ps equals o, that's case insensitive by the way, slash ps equals o means that it's simply going to, that interface is associated with the character o. And then all the tags that are used by that would have to use a point source of o in order to be scanned by that interface. Now that takes us to something called location codes. Location codes are very, very specific to the interface for the most part. There are two that are very common. We'll go over that. Location 1 is used to identify the interface number uh, that, uh, that this particular tag goes with. Now, by interface number, now we're talking about a case where you have maybe multiple interfaces with the same point source. So in a situation like that, uh, you may see, uh, you may see, for example, a slash ps equals o followed by a slash id equals 1 configured on one interface. And then at the same time, you may see a second interface has the same point source, ps equals o slash id equals 2. Now the function of this location code is to identify which copy of the interface we are going to be uh, working with. Are we going to be working with the one that's interface 1 or interface 2? That number that's passed as the ID is what you put in this field right here, location code 1. Now location code 4, this is a second very, very common, uh, common usage. It's the scan class. As we mentioned earlier, scan class is identified when you start up the interface with the slash f parameter. So if we look at slash a, an interface, typical interface startup, when I say slash f equals, uh, for example, five seconds f at every zero second, and slash f equals 10 seconds at uh, the zero seconds, and slash f equals, well, let's go with uh, eight hours offset seven hours from the start. See, these are three different scan classes. Okay. Scan class, this scan class right here is scan class 2. So by identifying a 2 right here, by choosing a 2 for location code 4, we're mapping that to the second scan class. So this particular tag would get 10 second scanning. Now if I wanted a scan class that goes uh, say once every 8 hours, with an offset of seven hours from the beginning of the day. This would go, say, at seven in the morning and then three in the afternoon and 11 o'clock at night, something like that. That would have to, I would have to put a, you know, this would be a three in location code four because that is the third scan class. So we just count over, uh, count over here. This is scan class one, this is scan class two, scan class three here. 